Welcome to another edition of Theater 3's Welcome to the Theater. I'm Ed Knights. I'm the president of Theater 3, and I'm uh, here to tell you about the next play we're going to be doing. It's called Belle Moral, and it's by, uh, uh, by Anne-Marie MacDonald. Uh, the play goes up on April 8th, and it runs for, the next, for those two weekends, uh, April 8, 9, 10, and uh, April 15, 16, 17. The evening shows on, on the Fridays and Saturdays are at 8 p.m. and the matinees on Sundays are at 2 p.m. So I'll be interviewing some of the cast uh, and to get a chance to meet us and hear a bit more about the play. So I have with me now Anne Sullivan, who is playing Flora in Belmoral. Welcome, Anne. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. Uh, tell us some about your theater background. I understand that you have played uh, at least one animal in your time. <laughs> I did. I started off uh, playing a rabbit in Winnie the Pooh when I was six years old. And that kind of uh, got me the excitement about the theater and I never looked back. I performed in high school and in college and then did a lot of community theater. But this is my first show with at Theater 3 and I'm delighted to be joining this new group. We're delighted to have you. Have you done shows with accents before? I have done shows with accents. Um, I think for uh, some people accents are things that come really easily and for some they come very difficult, very difficultly, <laughs> okay. whatever that word is. Yeah. Um, my last two shows, actually, I played uh, elderly Irish women. And for a long time, all I did was practice my Irish accent daily. But now, since this is set in Scotland, I've changed from one part of the British Isles to another part of the British Isles. And now I'm trying to develop a good Scots accent. Is it tough going from, from Irish to Scots? I find that with accents, it's, a, it's much more about the rhythm of the language than it is about the specific pronunciation. So once you get the rhythm of the language, the words seem to come more naturally. So I don't find it particularly hard. People talk about the Scots having a lilt in their, in their language. Would, that, would you agree that there's a, a, a lilt to it? Um, I feel that it's more a lilt in the Irish that I goes, see. Okay. But, and less so with the, uh, with the Scots. But there is a very definite rhythm that I find. Do you find that there can be an issue with the audience being able to understand the accent, when, uh, when, uh, particularly if they haven't heard it in a while? Most definitely. Um, in this play, a lot of times when the characters get very emotionally excited, they revert more to a, uh, a colloquial uh, kind of phrasing. So some of the phrases are, you have no idea what they mean anyway and then to try and say them in accent. There's one particular that says, um, where have your fit been gangin? <laughs> and that's supposed to mean, I think, where have your feet taken you lately? Uh -huh. So it has to be said very slowly. I don't even understand it. Yeah. Uh, or, so I'm not sure how the audience will, but we're working very hard at speaking slowly and clearly so that it's um, understandable. Do you, have you had other types of involvement with the theater in addition to being on stage? And what sorts of things have you been involved I in? I have produced uh, shows. I have done props, uh, set design, directed, and I've served on the boards of several uh, theater organizations. Great, great. Well, thank you very much. It was a pleasure. I have with me now my wife, Sean Knights, who is directing our play. Welcome, Sean. Thank you. And tell us about Bell Moral, how you happened to come upon the play and why you chose to direct this play. Um, I chose Bell Moral. It's a play that um, my husband and I saw at the Shaw Festival at Niagara-on-the-Lake probably six to seven years ago. Um, and it was actually written for them to produce um, uh, at Niagara on the Lake. Um, and it was a charming, quirky, 
um, eccentric, loving, and just a fascinating play. Um, I sort of kind of randomly chose it for us to go see, um, and um, I absolutely adored it from the moment um, that um, that it started. And it was actually so well received at, on at Niagara on the Lake that year that they actually brought it back the subsequent year also um, because it was so well received. Um, and it's not a traditional community theater show because. Um, of some of the language, um, but there are so many wonderful actors in the community theater that I knew that they could bring it to life as, just as well. And uh, tell us how you got involved with theater. Um, I got involved with the theater. Uh, my first role was in the fourth grade, fourth grade as I played the Wicked Witch of the West um, in, <laughs> in, um, in The Wizard of Oz, and um, I absolutely loved terrorizing my own classmates. And I said, oh, I think I might have found my calling. Um, and so that's how I first got doing theater. And I know you've done a lot of other things in, in the theater in addition to directing. Uh, what else have you been doing? Um, I, I, I'm kind of a jack of all trades, um, community theater, which is kind of fun. Um, I have performed, I have done choreography, um, I have enjoyed doing costumes for, um, for a number of different theaters. I also enjoy doing set design and set dressing. Um, and um, in a pinch, I can write a light, uh, run a lighting booth and, and a sound booth. So <laughs> I understand you uh, designed our poster. Yes, I did. This is this this yeah. This is m one of my newest things that I'm learning to do. <laughs> um, and it was interesting. I was like looking for. Um, a, a picture that was really capture people's attention um, and so I had fun doing a Google search of various Scottish castles um, and this one seemed to portray both the landscape that Belmoral describes and talks about in the play and it captured the mood of the play um, so yeah I was really happy to find that and it was fun so, so we have a number of items that are here in the studio that are actually on the set from the play. Uh, tell us about the jackal mask. Uh, the jackal mask is actually worn by um, um, an actor who, um, the one of the sort of interesting parts about this play is, is that it combines um, Egyptian mythology with Scottish mythology, with Darwinism, with evolution, with a little bit of Freud thrown in there, um, with, um, with this very engaging and loving family who has really had to manage secrets that some of them know and some of them don't. Um, and it is sort of how they're all also sort of fitting into this turn of the century and the world of enlightenment where art and science and nature are all sort of colliding. So it's, it, it has interesting concepts and it's woven really nicely, very neatly. Uh, and there's a ram's head? The, yes, the ram's head, well that actually came from my parents' barn in Connecticut. Um, they, were, they were dismantling their home and they had that and I was looking for um, skulls and for different um, pieces for the set decoration and uh, my mom was like, sure, go ahead and take it. So I feel like that was a score. <laughs> <laughs> and tell us about the ear. And the ear. <laughs> the ear. You made this ear. I, I did make this oh. ear. Um, the, the, the ear is part of one of the mysteries in the play. And it is an ear that, that used to belong to a character. Um, and it is a fairy ear. Um, it is, there is some debate about this as to exactly what the origins of it are dur um, in the course of the play. And it was actually quite a lot of fun to make. Um, and um, a, an actor wears the other one. Um, and it is, um, it was a lot of fun sculpting it out of sculpting. Do you of want sculpting. to show it to the, sure. to the camera? Yeah. Great. How's the rehearsal process been for you? The rehearsal process has been fascinating. <laughs> um, it's, so, it's so enjoyable to watch actors um, begin to sort of envelop and understand with each process more and more about, about who they are. Um, and 
I am the type of directors that I really trust the actors that are on stage. Um, I believe that actors are very intelligent people. Um, and the more they work with each other, the more they find layers within the play and within their characters. Um, and I see myself as really more like a guide to kind of help them and at the same time be able to step back and say, I know what you're trying to do, but I need for it to be bigger because we need to see that more. Um, and, I, and it's always a joy um, to, to be in that role. And this cast has been absolutely charming. And it's such a small cast, it's eight characters. And so you really get to know people as well. And that begins, you see that more and more as people work together also. I understand there are, uh, I know there are a couple of uh, children in the, in the play who weren't able to make it to the interviews. Tell us about them and what they um, do. They are t there, is, there is this character, and the character's name is Puppy. Um, you have a sort of a choice you can do as to how you portray this. I chose to actually take a child um, and have the child play the part of the puppy. It's another one of these sort of eccentric um, and quirky things about the play, but it works to have actual, an actual person playing a puppy. And then to have the dog sort of act and react to the various characters throughout the play. And the other character is Wee Farley. Um, one of the interesting things is that we're now confusing young Farley and Wee Farley <laughs> quite a bit. Um, but Wee Farley is the grandson of young Farley. And he is being sort of groomed to take over his grandfather's uh, uh, role. And the two of them share a lot of similarities um, from a very young age. So, so they're having some fun sort of playing with that. Great. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you. I have with me now Bill Horman, who is playing young Farley and also playing the jackal in Belmoral. Uh, welcome, Bill. Thank you, Ed. Tell us how you first got involved with the theater. I was in my high school senior play in Alexandria, Virginia in 1968 and proceeded to leave the stage for about 45 years <laughs> after that and started again um, in Concord, actually. What, what, what were you in when you came to Concord? I was in The, uh, the, the Man Who Came to Dinner. Okay. Um, how did you find out about uh, Belmoral? I always keep my eyes peeled for things, especially that Theater 3 is doing, and this appealed to me. It was, it's not a play I've heard of before, and I guess there's a good reason for that, because we are <laughs> the first in the U.S. to do this play. So it's very exciting, and uh, it's, a, it's an interesting play. Have you done plays with an accent before? I have. I did um, a night in Provence where I had to use a Mancusian accent of a, a bloke from Manchester. So this isn't that much different, but it's enough different to be a challenge. Is it harder if you've uh, uh, just done something with a, a similar accent to go between them? Do you ever tend to lapse back into Mancusian, or do you feel No, like not at all. It? And I think the, the trick to doing accents is just jump into it and do the best you can, and it gets easier the more that you do it. Tell us about your character, Young Farley. What is he, about? What is Young he like? Young Farley is the moderately loyal family retainer. Uh -huh. I think his best days are behind him, and it gives me the chance to do something everybody would love to do, is to walk on stage and say, you rang. <laughs> who, who wouldn't <laughs> want to do that? Okay. Um, young Farley's kind of slow, and he, he is, he's a very caring person, as it turns out, about members of the family. Um, the, the play reveals things as it goes along about the past of each of these characters, and even some of the characters that never appear on stage. And Farley's got a, a story behind him. So this play is about secrets. Um, how's it been so far for you um, in the rehearsal process? It's been fantastic. Uh, this is a great group of people. Everybody's very talented and every, very dedicated. We have uh, a wonderful director who's, above all, very kind to us as we stumble through things. And it's just been a great experience. You get to do some sleeping on stage, I believe? Yes, some of my <laughs> finest work is in a chair much similar to this, yeah. so this is me at my best. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, Ed. Okay. I have
have with me now Angie Powell. Some of, you, some of you will remember her because she was also in the show Titanic that Theatre 3 just did and uh, was interviewed then as well. Welcome back, Angie. Thank you. Uh, so tell us uh, how you got started in, in theater. Um, so I didn't really get started in theater until I was like a sophomore in high school. I grew up uh, dancing, actually. But um, once I moved on from that and I started theater, I did theater through high school. I was a theater minor in college. And then I've just enjoyed doing some community theater here and there for the last few years as well. So I understand that this show combines a couple of your interests because it's not only got, uh, you have an interest in uh, biology as well. Yes, I was a bio major in college. So. And how does that tie in with your character? So um, I'm playing Pearl, who is in her early 30s, and she is very interested in studying evolution. She's looking for transitional species um, because she wants to sort of see how humans came to be. So I was an ecology major. Um, I studied abroad in Australia, and I was studying the species there, so I have some experience in that. Have you done shows with an accent before? I have. I've done um, Southern accents, British, Cockney. Um, in Titanic, I did Irish and now Scottish, which I think is the most challenging <laughs> of the accents I've had to do. Has it, is it hard going from, for you for going from Irish to Scottish? Um, what's hard for me is once I'm in like a certain mode of accent, I can't seem to do any other type of accent. So I've always found <laughs> British to be very easy. And now if I try to speak in a British accent, I'm rolling my R's and I'm doing all of the Scottish things. So once I'm in a certain frame of mind, I'm kind of stuck there for the time being. What, what would you say is the, most, is the biggest difference between Scottish and Irish? Um, actually, you know, there are certain similarities like the way the O's sound and all of that, but um, they're not as similar as, as I thought initially with the, the rolling of the R's is a challenge. Um, the lilt is a little bit different. Um, where it resonates is a little bit different. So um, it's, it's subtle but significant. And have you done other things with the theater in addition to acting on stage? Um, I've done a little bit of choreography. I choreograph for Titanic um, and I'll be choreographing in, in some future shows as well. When I was in college, I worked in a costume shop, so I've done a little bit of that. I've helped with sets, but um, definitely not an expert with set design or anything like that. So. And you're going to be choreography, doing choreography for Cabaret yes. in, in the fall. I'm so. excited. Cabaret is my favorite musical, so oh, it's a, a big honor to be able to choreograph for that. And how's the rehearsal process been going for you? I've really enjoyed it. I wasn't sure going in, because when you just read the script for this play, it's very dense. There's a lot of challenging vocabulary. The storyline takes a while to, to settle in, um, so I wasn't sure coming in how, how it would be, but I've really enjoyed working with the cast. I've really enjoyed working with Sean, the director. Um, I've found sort of the close-knit cast to be uh, really enjoyable to work with, and now that I've gotten familiar with the show and I understand all of the connections between everything, it's, it's been a lot of fun. There's a lot of humor in it, um, so it, I wasn't sure what to expect, but it's turned out to be much more lighthearted and enjoyable than I may have initially thought. Great. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. I have with me now Lee Pallada, and Lee uh, is playing Mr. Abbott. Indeed. Uh, and tell me about how you got interested in the theater originally. Yeah, so I mean, I, I was very interested when I was a kid. I mean, it, it kind of, I think the first show I was ever in was. 10 years old, fifth grade. What was Sh that? Charlotte's Web is the, ah, old, the old sheep, which was fun for me at the time. <laughs> so um, playing an old elderly sheep. So um, yeah, and then you know I did sh sh uh, shows all throughout school, uh, and then really, I mean, in my professional days, you know, this is probably this is my kind of first. I'm definitely the rookie of the group here. First uh, show, really getting in, back into it after a long, long break. So I'm really excited and really thankful. Good. I understand your daughter does theater? Yes, she does. Yes, she does um, some of the local shows here uh, here in Acton, actually. Um, and uh, it was actually auditioning with her. We were going to be in a show together. Unfortunately, uh, it didn't work out. The show didn't go through. Um, but that's kind of what prompted me to think, and maybe I'll go out and, and try to get, you know, get back into things myself on my own as well. So. And how did you find out about Bell Morrill? You know, I'm trying. I'm trying to think. You know, I believe I was just telling uh, some of the other cast that um, it was a New Year's resolution for myself that I would get into <laughs> acting. So I think I just did a little googling, and um, you know, didn't even know a lot about Theater Three. And you know, I live here in Acton, so realizing that there was a, a theater 
so close by and with such a great history and you know hearing you know, about the production the most recent production that you did it was just um, it, was, it just seemed like an amazing opportunity and I was so thankful that I was able to get a part so. right. well, we're glad to have you yeah how about the Scottish accent how has that been you know what for me it was uh, you know a lot of um, <laughs> even going in just a lot of research uh, on YouTube in particular I found a lot of great instructional videos to try to help me with it and uh, you know it's, it's fun I love doing accents you know at home uh, you know make my daughter laugh and different things so you know this one this one was definitely a challenge because um, you want you want to respect the accent you know you want to you want to make sure you're not doing some uh, you know comic uh, version of it um, so for me it was it's been a lot of fun though just because it's, it's, it's been a good challenge too. Tell us about your character yeah, Mr. Abbott, um, he, you know, he's the family lawyer and, and he represents you know, fact in many ways in terms of, you know, what's going on with, uh, with the state of, of Belmoral and without giving away, you know, too much, he kind of is the fr brings in kind of that for the first, I think one of the first major twists in, in the plot. Uh, kind of sets some things in a, in a tailspin and, you know, there's some other, some other ways that he gets involved later on that will, uh, you know, we'll leave it for later. But he is—he's—he does bring a lot of the, uh, the the fact, if you will, to the to what's going on, and and also there's you know some uh, some rivalries and whatnot that develop as uh -huh. related to his character too. So uh, it's it's been a lot of fun playing him. And the rehearsal process for you, how has it been? It's been great. I mean, uh, you know, the director's been so flexible uh, in trying to really accommodate all of our needs. And, you know, for people like myself, of course, that we, you know, I think we all have day jobs. And uh, we need that flexibility. And um, it's, been, it's been great. It, it's really been no extra stress in my life because of this. It's been nothing but pleasure. So Good. Well, thank you very much. You're very Thanks. welcome. Thank okay. you. Um, I'd like to introduce Ed Knights. Uh, he is part of the cast of Belmoral. He plays the part of Dr. Seamus Reed um, in the play Belmoral. Welcome, Ed. Thank you. Um, so tell me a little bit about what drew you to the part of um, Seamus Reed or, and or auditioning for Belmoral. Uh, well, I was with you seeing the play in Canada, and I really liked it. It was fascinating. I liked the mixture of the mysticism and the mythology and, and uh, then the, the sort of the emerging science of, uh, of evolution. Um, so that, that's what got me interested. And then it's got an accent, and I love plays with accents. I just think it's really fun to, to, to work with them. All right. What has been the most challenging thing for you in doing this play? I think it's been the fact that in my real life I'm a primary care doctor and this character is a doctor and the, the way in which uh, doctors uh, um, acted toward their patients was quite different from, from the way we do now. So Dr. Reed is a very proper uh, uh, man who's quite formal and who uh, is always sure he's right whether he is or not uh, and not sympathetic uh, in general um, and that's quite quite different from the way we practice medicine now and so that's been that's just because I've been a doctor for you know 38 years it's it's a transition that I've gotten, had to make uh, but it's also been Good because it's a, I love acting and and it's a, and and this is a, uh, a good opportunity to practice a totally different character style from what I usually play. So um, tell us a little bit about your early beginnings in uh, theater and what have been some of your favorite roles that you've done. Um, I started out playing Jack in Jack and Jill in kindergarten, uh, and then I was in plays in college. Uh, and uh, wrote a couple of shows when I was in medical school and then came out and um, started studying tap, jazz dance, uh, voice uh, and acting and um, some of the roles I've enjoyed the most have been uh, playing uh, Billy in 42nd Street, Bobby in uh, Crazy For You um, and I've played the Tin Man a couple of times which has been a lot of fun. 
Um, tell us about anything that you have upcoming that you're going to be working on at when Belmoral closes. Well, Theater 3 is going to be doing uh, cabaret. Uh, you just heard uh, um, uh, Angie uh, in the interviews uh, talking about how she's going to be the choreographer and I'll be the director for that. Great. Is there any role that you would really like to play that you haven't had a chance? Wow. I, I, I really haven't had one role that I've been uh, looking out for. Um, I, it's, it's, I like to just go on Theater 411 and see what's out there and see if a part sounds interesting to me. Um, or if it's a director I've worked with before and like to work with. Um, or if it's a theater group that I've worked with before and like to work with. Great. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. So you've now met most of the cast of Bell Moral. I'd like to thank them for coming down to the studio today. And I'd like to also thank the people you'll never see who are critical to our functioning. And there are quite a few, uh, but the ones that are obvious to the audience, even though you don't see them, are the people who are doing sound, the people who are doing lights. We have, a, you know, of course, stage manager, we have people doing uh, costumes and doing makeup uh, and publicity. Uh, there's a whole team of folks that you don't see that are critical to what we do. Um, so just to remind you again, the show is going up the second two weekends in April and it's at Theater 3 and hope to see you there.